So welcome everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well given the circumstances. This uh, is the first of what may seem uh, like many uh, tutorials I'm going to upload in order to help you uh, move forward with the class and master the material. I will try to keep these videos to uh, between five to seven minutes. Uh, please forgive me if I go overboard a little bit. Uh, and so to start, I chose chapter seven uh, because I thought it would be great to uh, just touch on a few main subjects uh, and topics that we uh, looked at before we got interrupted. Uh, these will help you build uh, your skills and techniques in order to solve the more difficult problems in chapter nine and onwards. So the main concept of this chapter is this idea of a sampling distribution of the sample mean. So what this means is that a lot of times we are not able to observe the population. We've discussed this many times. Um, and therefore, what we do is we take a sample. So in order to understand uh, where our sample lies relative to all the other samples, it's good to put it against everything else and um, use a distribution of samples like it in order to understand if it's uh, an extreme sample or if it's something that's normal. So a sampling distribution of sample mean is simply the probability distribution um, of sample means obtained from all possible samples of a certain size. We call this size n. So, you know, if you pick uh, a sample of size 15, you'd like to compare it to all the other size 15 samples. So the interesting uh, thing that happens here is that if the population is itself normal, it shouldn't be a problem. The distribution of uh, sample means will also be normal. But even if the population uh, of individual items is not normal, there are circumstances when the population of all sample mean becomes normal. And we see this best here in this illustration, and we've talked about this in class. So even when the population is objectively not normal, like here, here, and here, uh, you can end up with a uh, normal looking sampling distribution simply by increasing the sample size. So uh, let's do the most extreme situation here. If we take sample size n for, equals to four, uh, you can see that a lot of the skewness is um, essentially cut off. Uh, and if we inc increase the sampling, uh, the, the sample size to uh, 25, then the distribution itself becomes pretty normal. And then you can apply all the normal distribution uh, concepts that we learned in chapter six, especially using the, um, the Z table. And so this is the central limit theorem. This is the power of the central limit theorem that says no matter the probability distribution that describes the population, if the size, if the sample size is large enough, and usually we use the number 30 as a threshold uh, for large samples, the population of all possible sample means is approximately normal. And it'll have these two parameters, just like the population distribution had parameters. You've got parameters for the uh, sampling distribution. Uh, the average of all averages, mu x bar, is approximately equal to the population average. And the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, also called the uh, standard error, um, is going to be a function of uh, the standard deviation of the population standard deviation. Uh, it is smaller, obviously. Uh, by a scale of uh, 1 over the square root of n. And the reason why it's smaller is that each sample average uh, averages out the highs and the lows. And so you don't see a lot of extreme, situ uh, extreme observations with averages. And therefore, the sample average, each sample average, is closer to mu than any individual population measurement. Uh, you can see all the relationships here on this right-hand side. I would advise you to, to understand as well the relationships. Um, that I've colored here in red and green. Uh, so for example, when you're talking about the variance uh, for a sampling distribution, it is directly proportional to the variance of the population, meaning it increases when, that, when the population um, variance increases and inversely proportional to the sample size. So uh, when the sample size increases, the uh, sampling distribution standard deviation or standard error decreases. Uh, those relationships are important, especially when it comes to multiple choice questions uh, and the like. The last part of this chapter is uh, really nothing new. It is a continuation of uh, the concepts began uh, at the start. And essentially, they address uh, the idea of a sampling distribution, but made out of, made out of proportions rather than mixed numbers. Uh, and so we call this a sampling distribution uh, of the sample proportion. So if a sample, uh, a random sample, again, size n, 
uh, is taken from a population, then the sampling distribution of the sample uh, proportion will itself be normal. Uh, or if n is large, and again, here we'll introduce a new concept for large when it comes to proportions, you have to uh, make sure that both of these conditions are met. I'll take off this parentheses here. It's not nor needed. Uh, so the first, per, uh, the first uh, condition has to be n times p is greater than 5, uh, and then n times 1 minus p is greater than 5. So whatever the uh, sampling distribution uh, average is, sampling distribution of the sample proportion average is, uh, it will be equal to p. So take that p, multiply it by the sample size, and if it's greater than 5 and uh, n times 1 minus p is greater than 5, then you're good to go, and that's a big sample. It's a large enough sample. And the standard deviation, also called the standard error, is uh, this function right here. It's p times 1 minus p over n. Take the square root. So this has been a brief summary of the main points of Chapter 7.